Well, hello there. Um, my name is Pete, and uh, I'm observing with an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, a Celestron CPC 800, from uh, the Isle of Wight, uh, which is a small island off the south coast of the UK. I um, wasn't going to observe tonight, but um, we might be able to get a, a few objects in before the clouds move in. I've uh, just aligned my scope. Um, mentioned CPC 800. I was using the, uh, I was also just focusing then, actually let's move myself out of the way. So I was focusing using um, sharp cap um, and the auto focus routines in there. So I think I'm now focused. I'm focused on M13. So I'm just going to go into um, observe mode on M13. Actually, I will stop that because it would help if I chose the correct exposure. I'm going to go for four seconds exposure. I'm using darks tonight. Um, during the summer month, I was just using um, hot pixel removal, but I was using some darks tonight. Let's just see if we've got it. There we go. Um, and let's auto stretch the image. So M13. Fantastic globular cluster in Hercules. Um, as it says on the screen, 22,000 light years away. Um, globular clusters are uh, extremely old. I suppose this one's relatively close at 22,000 light years. And we are losing some. So when it goes red, um, it, it means that my FWHM filter has been exceeded, which is currently set to 5.02. Um, only because that's what it was said to the last time I observed. Um, let's see what happens and we need to adjust that. So four second exposures, um, the gain is set to uh, 900. Just getting started. So this is a Alta Hypercam, Hypercam, should I say, 294C Pro camera. Um, it's fan cooled, um, so it's not tech cooled. So the current temperature is 17.1 degrees. And the particular dark I'm using, I think was 13.7 because it was taken um, late during the last observing session I did. Um, but it seems to be okay. If I click on a little zoom, it means I can balance things up. Well, that always confused me, first of all. And I clicked on zoom, everything disappeared, which was rather worrying. Uh, but I, there's a little scroll bar, scroll along until we find the peak we're after. And then we can see that we're not quite aligned. Red is slightly less than green. Uh, blue looks okay. What we'll do is we'll just move the black level up just for the peak. And then let's bring our mid levels up a little bit just to accentuate those huge number of stars. And let's zoom in a bit because this object is um, full of stars. Let's go up to, uh, well, we're going to 91%. Let's go up to 100. Oh, we've gone past, no, 100%. So that's 100% view of 13 in Hercules, a globular cluster, 22,000 light years distance. Um, and one of the classic views, I and mean, it looks brilliant just visually through this through the scope um, to the Celestron CPC 800, which I've had for many years, um, nearly 14 years, I think I've said that before, but I didn't want to replace the scope. Well, even if I did want to replace the scope, I don't think I would have been allowed to uh, because they cost a lot of money, scopes. Uh, so what I did was uh, when I got to EAA is I bought a camera and I bought the 294C Alta, Alta Hypercam. And um, it's very nice. It's a color camera. Um, and it kind of satisfies what I want is I wanted to see things in color because I was kind of, um, I wanted to get away from grain smudges and the color camera does that. So on brighter objects, you see color, which is amazing. I wanted to see more structure, more detail, which um, you, you obviously do. And I wanted to see fainter objects, which um, it does. So having shifted from uh, visual to EAA, I don't ever foresee going back to visual astronomy, if only just, you know, for the for a little bit of fun, maybe one day. But 
really EAA is the way to go. Um, especially I've noticed that over the years that I've lived um, at this, in the small island, our skies have seemed to have got more and more light polluted. Um, and so EA has a way of cutting through that, allowing us to see things we haven't seen. And I've seen amazing things with EAA that I hadn't seen at all visually. So it's well worth getting into. And I didn't want to spend a fortune, so I kept the scope. I only bought a, a new camera. I did buy a focal reducer because one of the reasons um, I wanted to get into EA as well is that you may notice I'm not sat next to my telescope. My telescope is outside. Now, to be fair, the temperature tonight is perfectly okay. I said it's um, the temperature of my camera is 17 degrees and uh, there would be about, I don't know, 14, maybe uh, 13 degrees, which is still acceptable but in the middle of winter it can get a little bit chilly so sitting inside uh, was the way to go so I did invest in a focal reducer sort of focal reducer I don't know I already had a focal reducer but I did invest in a electronic focuser um, and I also had to invest in a um, a star diagonal prism star diagonal beta t2 prism because the little cpc 800 has got stubby little arms because it's a fork mount and I can't get the necessary distance between the focal reducer and the camera sensor without hitting the bottom of the mount. Um, and so I put a, a, a prism in there just to uh, allow it to have enough movement through. So we've been stacking, this is 59 um, frames we've been stacking out. Let's go out to the full view again. Uh, that's four minutes. We can, we can balance this up a little bit. Make it a little bit darker. Bring it up a bit. But M13 is a fantastic site with these streamers of stars coming out from this cent central dense core. So M13, a globular cluster. Uh, let's do something else. Oh, um, I was going to record it. Um, let me just do. So this is um, a tool I'm using down over here. It's called Astro Planner. And I'm just recording my observation. So M13, amazing uh, as ever. Uh, and what I can do is I will uh, save exactly a scene. And I can um, go into M13. So this folder actually rests on my um, laptop outside. And I can just grab hold of this image and drop it into Astro Planner. And now for my observation, I've also now have the picture saved, a little postcard to say I saw it tonight. I'll put that back over there for now. And let's move on. So let's go back to my objects. So I've got a whole list of objects that um, this list has, has grown, actually. It was only meant to be a list of what we've seen tonight, but it, it's become uh, what I've seen the last few nights. So that's good. So we're going to go to another... Uh, some classic, we're going to go to um, M57, which is a planetary nebula uh, in Lyra. And we are going to slew over to there. Um, and off we go. In fact, what I'll do is I'll also, uh, the other tool up here is Stellarium, the planetarium program. M57 selected. And I, we've got a few scripts that allow me to run everything from Astro Planner. So there we go. I'm actually at the Ring Nebula and you'll see the classic Ring Nebula that we're going for. Uh, let's uh, see where we are. It's still slowing. Oh, there it is straight away. So we are at uh, one second exposure. Uh, there it is. Uh, hovering. There. What I do though, is I'll just um, take it down to half a second and we'll just bring it up to more towards the centre. So this is a half second exposure you're seeing now and so you can appreciate that the Ring Nebula is quite bright. And it looks like a little smoke ring in space if you look at it visually through an 8 inch gap. Um, oh, that's good enough. Uh, let's go back to a four second exposure. And we'll change our. Oh, must have hit something. There we go. 
Uh, we'll change our banner at the top to N57 and let's go into observe mode. It will reset that to so there we go. So here we got the ring nebula. Um, we can see it's quite a bit of noise. Let me just zoom in. I'm gonna go 100 percent straight away. So as it says 2300 light years away, um, the central star is visible right there. It's very noisy. But as the frames build up, it should decrease. Yep, slowly very slowly um there's a very faint smudge right here as well you might be able to see it and that is a galaxy um great feature of a uh, shark cap is if i now uh, bring up the deep sky um, annotation and just do a plate solve so we take a picture of the sky it compares it to its database and then it goes the this is the object so here we are the ring nebula m57 and we've got ic1296 is that little fuzzy bit off to one side in fact if i zoom in a bit more which is way too much but uh, there it is there and maybe the central stars become more visible there as well get rid of that we've got very pixelated because we're uh, let's go back to 100 percent and what we'll also do is the color was, is turned down a bit, so let's turn the color up. So we can see that we've got this ring or this sphere of expanding gas around the white dwarf that has puffed off, puffed off its outer layers um, several times maybe. And the different gases are glowing. Not bad, not bad. Let's go back to the full view. So quite small, but um, very interesting. So that's 26 frames so far. Now this is four seconds, uh, four second exposures I'm doing. I'm not doing very uh, long exposures tonight, very long subs. Uh, the gain's 900, which I believe was when, which, which used to be when um, the outer astro switched from this uh, to this high, gain low noise setting um but actually that's not true anymore I, i've read today actually on um robin sharp cop sharp cap forum it was saying that actually the outer sdk now changes lower down but i'm not sure when it where it changes lower down so i'll leave it at 900 for now and then find out what's going on later on but yeah things change and that's uh, that's great but we'll have to more things to investigate wow so here we go, M57, a planetary nebula. Uh, let me uh, bring it up. Let's have a look and see if there's any information. If we go to CDS, we've got a nice, this is Aladdin. Um, you can download Aladdin. Um, oh, there's the galaxy right there, actually. Um, you can download Aladdin. This is Aladdin Light, which is obviously inside the uh, web page. And this gives me links off to Sinbad and to Ned. Um, it gives me so I, I can do different views of it. best um it also gives me uh papers um on it as well so planetary nebula source of enlightenment so you can go up and see different papers as well um this one exploring planetary nebula as a stage in the evolution of low to intermediate mass stars Ooh, wow. whatever rocks your boat but there you go so you can go and read up about planetary nebula oh there's the ring nebula there wow there are bigger ones. So that's quite interesting. So we've gone uh, 50 frames, 3 minutes, 20 seconds. So what I'm doing is exactly the same thing. I'm going to go to M57. I'm going to say I want to do a new observation. I'm going to general and say uh, a very bright object, uh, central star, glowing. Within colored, well, that's what color right of course. Colored rings, glowing gas, all very poetic, but there we go. And just as last time, I will um, 
get an attachment. So I'm just going to save that exactly as seen. I'll go back into fine mode actually after I've done that. Which I am. Bring up this. M57 processed. Just drag hold of that. Whack it into Astro Planner as um, a way of remembering that I've uh, observed it, which is great. So that's that one done. Let's move on to something else. Let's go back into objects. Alberio. Ah, yeah, Alberio. Why not? Now, Alberio is a double star, which... Um, Albirio selected. Oh, Albirio, sorry, I was saying Albirio, wasn't it? Albirio is a double star, but here it is. I can move, I zoom in, I can separate it right there. Um, it's a very pretty double star in a small telescope as well. Um, but let's go and see if we can take a look at it as well. Um, let's change that. Let's... Slew. We will slew over... Go. And there it is. Let's get rid of the uh, oops of the reticule. And let's zoom in a bit. And as you see, it's um, zoom in a bit. and as you see, what we have is we have. Um, golden or orange um, giant star here and we have a blue companion star here as well and they are a, a very pretty sight in a, a small telescope the color differences the color color contrast is, is is very good but I just thought we'd stop by and take a look at the double star um, we're not doing any stacking on this I'm just going to I just wanted to show the different color contrast between the two. Um, maybe what we're we on, we're on a quarter of a second exposure. If we drop it down to say a 30th of a second, what does that give us? Oh, there you go. So we still got the orange. It's less, less, they like less orange, isn't it? Less golden there, but that's still lovely and lovely and blue. Anyway, I thought we'd stop off as we go to somewhere else. Um, and I think we better head over to. Uh, M27, which is another planetary nebula, but this one is great because it's got some really good um, structure in it. Let's switch back into fly mode and let's head over to the Dunbar nebula. Slew. Uh, and while we're slewing, we move um, Solarium. And there it is, M27. Let's move in a bit. It is an impressive. Um, let's turn off those cars. I think we're arriving. Aha! We've arrived. So you can see that kind of hazy, um, and that's the core. And this obviously is called, I believe, isn't it? The Apple Core Nebula as well. We're pretty centered, but I'm going to move it up slightly so we can get it more central. Be too far, but that's life. Uh, Let's stack that. So let's change the titles and also change the um, what we're going to save it under. There we go, M27. Oh, silly boy. Let's stop again. Would help if I change my. I'll change it to force. Oh. Let's make this one slightly better. I'm going to go to eight seconds on this one and I'll change my dark to an eight second dark. Um, I think actually I'll browse that because I do believe I've got two. I do. Um, let's go into observe mode again then, eight seconds. Excellent. 
So here we go. So this is um, another planetary nebula, 1,200 light years away. Um, and the good thing about this one, it's bigger. So where I'm running is about f um, 6.4, um, which is quite a lot, really. I mean, a lot of people, if they're using um, razors and things like that, be running at f2 and below, won't they? Um, Reminds me, maybe just switch over. Um, but this is a lovely one because there's lots of structure and colour to this, which is great. And actually, I'm going to put the colour up a bit more on this one. Um, and the colour balance isn't right at all, but I'm just going to do a. There you go. And let's just. We could try and do an auto colour balance. Oh dear, no. Oh dear, no. That was all a bit rubbish, wasn't it? Let's do it by hand. Let's move those reds up until they match in with the green. And let's get the blues up as well, because they're not they're miles behind the... A bit hard to see the blues against the black, actually. There you go. Let's zoom in a bit. There you go, 100%. Now you can really see the apple core, the kind of core here. You can see that there's like these little lobes on either side of it. And also this, there's this red as well. Again, this is, it looks like a series of shells that have been thrown off the central star, which I take it's this one here. And this seems to be like a jet, but it's obviously a long the sphere, I take it, wrapped around the object. I mean, planetary nebulas, they make some very beautiful shapes in space. There's no doubt about that. So this is 15 frames, which we're stacking at um, eight seconds this time, um, rather than the four seconds we were doing on M57 and on M13. So 1200 light years, it's about half the distance of M57. It definitely spans a bit of the sky here. It is very pretty. Do I have any user notes on it? No. No, I didn't put any notes on it. Let's make an observation while we're here. Let's say Great structure and color. Um, let's say that we're doing a uh, eight second sub, uh, 900 gain, and we're using darks. Uh, oh, I think I spelled darks correctly. And we're using um, gradient removal as well. And we're we'll say in a minute what our total exposure time was or the number of subs we've done on that but it's starting to form up nicely so let's we're at 26 frames three minutes 28 seconds let's darken the background a little bit and let's uh bring up the mid levels see if we can get those lobes appearing a bit more Maybe a bit darker. We've still got quite a bit of noise. Um, and you can balance the noise off by taking the mids off a bit. Um, if I take the mids off a little bit more, you'll see what I mean. It gets nice and dark, but you lose a little bit of the gas. And EAA, we're not... I mean, obviously everyone likes a nice picture, but we're trying to see things. And I want to see these lobes. I'm also seeing a little some pixels, hot pixels there as well. But you see this lobe, so you've got this kind of like edge to it running here and then this faint nebulosity extending out this way and on the same one here except at this one it looks like it's gone reddish but it might just be the outside I boost the colors even more let's take them all the way up and see what oh yeah you can see the whole pixels there and there but there you go have I overdone the color it's a personal thing you see you decide how you want to see the picture 
I'll take it down to there. I think that's all right. And that's where it is, like here. So we've come down, if you look in Stellarium, we've come down from M57 up here to our biro, which was on the, um, the head of uh, Swan in Cygnus, and then down to um, the Dunbar Nebula here. And that's where we've been at all the time. Let's just go back to our view of it. It's 61.9 degrees high, it's quite high. So we've been stacking for five minutes now. If I come out of here, let's go back to the full view. Um, let us take that down slightly. I think, I think the M M27 is an impressive planetary nebula. And, and this is, I think it's one of those great EAA objects that's full of color and structure and it just builds up nicely. And over time, I'm going to get a much smoother background image and um, things are going to pop out and we're going to start seeing more stuff, more structure in the lobes and things, which I, I think is quite impressive. But for tonight, you see, I'm saying, yeah, that's all right. I'm going to save it. Save it exactly as seen. Um, we go to attachments. And... Um, Go back up for Dunbar Nebula, and it's that one there because we made a mistake. I made a mistake, first of all. Let's just drag that into there. And now we have this um, little snapshot forever of how the Dunbar Nebula looked. Zoom in quite, heavy, quite high on it. Yeah. Right. Let's go back to our objects. Um, let's go back to fine mode. And we'll switch this, it's not one second, we'll leave it one second. Uh, let's go to an open cluster. Now I quite like this open cluster, it's called um, the Foxhead Cluster. I have no idea how someone decided it was a Foxhead. You make your own mind up on this one. Um, it's NGC 6819 and it's in um, Cygnus, I believe. Hold on, let me just, yeah, Cygnus. Uh, so let's go there. Let's simply going to slew to that object. Let's show it in um, Stellarium as well while we're waiting. Selected. Well, thank you for that. And here we come. It's a bit. And there it is. So this here is the Foxhead cluster. Um, it's a open cluster. It's um, 7,200 light years away, so it's quite distant, but it's made up of um, a, large, sorry, a number, let's just say a dozen, two dozen type brighter stars, and then a whole multitude of fainter stars, some of which will be, uh, sorry, I want to just uh, center this a little bit. So it seems to be drifting for some reason. Now it's quite high. This is 78 degrees high. So it's quite high. Um, for an altazimuth mount, which explains why it's moving so slowly at four times sidereal, but I'm going to persevere and get it across. And then I'm going to go up. The RA is the problem. We'll step across a little bit more. And that looks good. We're going to come out of there. So, uh, do we do a control two? Do we say box it? We did. Oh, was that a satellite there? Um, let's go into observe mode. So let's change this. I'm going to go into four seconds again on this one, not rather than eight. Um, so we'll switch to our four second dark print. There you go. Um, and let's go into observe mode. There we go. So straight away, it's a very pretty one. Let's do an auto stretch just to get us roughly where we're going first. We're very blue. Three stacks, three subs, four subs. Five subs, right. 
Let's get the colour down, back down to one a bit, because we're not really looking for the colour as such. Let's pull down the reds and pull down the blues a bit. What I'm doing is I'm clicking on them and you, you can just click underneath or you can use the cursor key to do it. There you go. I think that's good enough. So we've got this, um, you can see the cluster here and you can see that there are Let's zoom in a bit. We have these kind of brighter stars and then this whole multitude of smaller stars, which we can just probably bring up even more. We can see the noise if I do that though a little bit. So I'm going to back off a little bit on that just to do it. And in fact, to be honest, let's see the whole view because I mean, the view of, of my telescope is about 50, arc minutes in width and 30 is it 34 yeah 34 arc minutes in um, height roughly there's some decimal points in there as well um you'll notice if you see this there are some distortions up here along the stars in the corners and i'm also not using any flats which um i should do really but to be quite honest with you i can't be bothered so um it's, it's my fault. I, if I want to, I can. I do have a panel that I could do it with. Um, but I just, tonight, I just threw this telescope out and um, I just wanted to observe. So I had some darks, so I'm just using the same darks for, for my library, even though the temperature's slightly off. It's now 16.6 .6 degrees and we're using flats that were made at 13.7. But it seems to be working fairly well. But here we go, this very pretty cluster. So let's just... Um, Let's just uh, record that. So it's um, a lovely cluster uh, with a mixture uh, of bright of bright and uh, many dim stars. We'll go to the attachments. So that's 41 frames. And already it's smoothing. I can still see those noise and things here, but it's still, it's smoothing out. I can just probably pull this mid-levels up a little bit more now. Sometimes you can, I mean, some objects respond quite well for taking over the peak. Yeah, that does actually. So this rich cluster, it's really a lovely little cluster. Though, I'm still saying, where's the fox head? Where's the fox head? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so where is the fox? I'm going to put that into my notes. So where is... The fox's. Oh, actually, uh, okay. Where is the fox's head? Question mark. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, who knows? Maybe you guys can tell me. Save exactly as seen. Um, Drive just disconnected for some reason. Um, this, these are my. Um, I don't know why there's a. Thing at the end. Uh, so I create these things automatically from Astro Planner. These names of these files. So you know M13. So rather than just having a very simple name, I can actually have a bit more information. Usually the type, the distance, the, the um, constellation it's in. I just find it just helps. Um, you're sorting through. Let's just drop that down into Astro Planner and Astro Planner now has a nice box head. Cluster, let's come out. Let's go back into fine mode, which just lowers the uh, it's set to a second but a second just to do it. 
Uh, let me just sort this list again. I'm just going to sort the list. I can, you can sort it how you want to sort it. and uh, You can add in your own fields and things like that to Astro Planner. It's very good. I was thinking of, yeah, the witch's broom. Okay, so we've seen a globular cluster. We've seen a couple of planetary nebulas. We've seen a double star and we've seen um, an open cluster, the fox head. Let's go and see um, another classic of the summer sky, uh, the Veil Nebula or the Cygnus Loop. And we're going to go for the western side, which is the witch's broom. Um, let's just see that in um, Stellarium. NGC 6,960 Classic. selected. Classic here. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I want to drag this down, I think, to about here. I wonder what that star is. Let's get that current object. And let's slew over to there. So I just selected a star that, just to frame it. Frame it nicely and, and hopefully in the picture. So has that done it? Yeah, the Witch's Broom, the Western Vale, Filamentary Nebula, 2,400 light years away, apparently. I do believe 10,000, 20,000 years ago, supernova explosion. Ah, so there is 52 signals. So hold on, if I just swap that, that's going to put the nebula coming up through here. I think we're going to go with that. And I'm going to change this to a eight second exposure. Uh, let's get this back to eighteen to an eight second dark. Was there was that one, wasn't it? He says. Yeah. Hey, we're moving. Why are we moving? Funny enough, right here is the Val Nebula. Hold on, I'm just going to... I don't know why we're moving. Have we got a cat on the decking or something? Oh. No, we're not moving. I don't think. Anyway, I'll just wait for one more sub to come in, just to make sure we're not moving. But right down to the centre... The center of my screen I can see the bell nebulas there. Let's let's go straight into observe mode. Let's tidy that up a little bit with it there. Oh we're slightly I wonder if we are moving still. I'll take my FWHM filter up a bit. Okay. So straight away, you might better see this very faint. This is the broom coming down through here. Let's just auto stretch it. And let's um, bring the reds up. Bring the blues up. Let's alter this slightly to see if we can bring up the mid so we can start to see um, there it is so here's the room it's like a little tornado it's all very structured it's actually obviously the, the whole thing is again a sphere that's been exploded off the supernova and what we're seeing is the edge of that of the sphere hence it looks like a loop um, in the Cygnus region in fact if we come out you'll see there we go. So there's the Eastern Veil, there's the Western Veil. Remember, my telescope switches east-west. It flips horizontally. So um, there's the East, there's the West. This whole loop, this large explosion of um, of a giant star. Do I have some notes on this? Yes, yeah, 36 times the area of the full moon. Some little notes down here on that. I must admit, I, I, I observed this obviously with my eight inch visually, and I always found it quite difficult unless, you know, you, you, 
you can see the kind of ghostly shade but but if you use filters like um an o3 filter or a ultra high contrast filter it did improve the view but the first time i really saw that maybe that's when i was using eaa so we have no filters on this there's there's nothing it's this is just straight through scope um 90 degree angle on the prism straight into the camera and that's it um so we haven't got any filters whatsoever to improve this view this is what the way it is so we've done 17 um subs so far and if i move my black level just over i i find with the veil that if you just move it slightly over now this is going to cause all sorts of problems with the background but i'm going to bring up the veil a bit more now there you go so i'm saying you have this kind of um tornado in space looping down past 52 signi and it goes down in the and if you go down further you'll see the kind of the broom part of it this is the stick part of it um again a very impressive sight so about ten thousand years ago whoomph, um, it would have been quite bright i mean it's only 2400 light years from earth so let's face it it would have been visible to our ancestors And 10,000 years later, we can look at it through a little scope in the back garden. There's a lot of noise in this image, but we're only at 25 subs. That's three minutes and 20 seconds. We are building up. Let's just take it down slightly. Sometimes it's worth, there's a minor deconvolution which does help. Let's see if it does. So, ah, yeah. Let's make it so. Aha. And then I think I can. Bring this down a bit. There you go. There you have. this structure if we zoom in you can see the structure inside let's bring the color up oh not very colorful so there you go so it's kind of like this twisty center got this red bit coming down through here there's the star and we've got this little filament coming off the star and they start to break up the filaments down here now that's a bit of a noisy image, and I've really um, I'm using a filter, uh, deconvolution, uh, deconvolution, sorry, filter, finer, to try and enhance it a bit. It's all forming here, drifting across, but get these little things. If I zoom in even more, I mean, obviously this is way past optical. You can start to see this intricate structure. So we go down it. It's a really impressive sight. Um, I do remember when I had an O3 filter on it. You could just see parts of this structure, and it was amazing. But here we can take our time and really explore it with a bit of color as well, which is um, fantastic. So there we go, we've got the Veil Nebula. The Western Veil, the Witch's Broom, the Handle. It's starting to form up quite nicely actually now. If we give it a bit more time, the noise will start to fall away. I could most probably adjust the colour balance a bit better. But it is a it is a rather nice rather nice sight. So as it's looking for another object, there is one I want to look at, but we've been in total exposure now of six minutes. So let's make an observation. 
say as usual an impressive site the twisting funnel of nebulosity a twisting funnel of nebulosity Uh, let's take a snapshot of that. There we go. Now we come out of here and it should have a which is broom, there it is. And we grab hold of that, just put it into our database. And there we go, there was our There's our witch's broom. Perfect. Let's go back into fire mode. Okay, let's move on to another object, um, which crescent nebula. Let's go to the crescent nebula. Again, not quite high um, in Cygnus again. Let's slew to there. NGC 6,888 selected. So the Crescent Nebula. There. Let's, um... Where are we going? Why are we moving? Oh, there we are. So the Crescent Nebula is formed, well, again it's about Nebula, but I, I suppose it's about Nebula. It's the gas clouds blown off the star, and the star that's blown off is this star right here, which you're getting towards the centre of the screen, as you see. Um, and it's called a wolf Red star, and it's very hot, and uh, radiation coming off of it uh, ionises the the gas clouds that were being thrown off when it was a red giant. And um, that makes this, this nebula. So uh, we're going to do eight seconds again, I think, on this. And let's just go in and take a look at, do you see the crescent nebula? Let's reset this so that we are, oh, let's take the zoom off. Oh, there we go, we're fine. And immediately, can you see that there is the star of the crescent right here? In fact, it's right. Small things come in, we'll see more. So it's coins this. Um, so it was discovered by William Herschel in 1792. Sorry, I've got some notes. Oh, what's doing that? Let me just resize the sentiments easy. Uh, colliding. So it's formed by the fast stellar winds from the Wolf Red Star WR136, um, colliding with and energizing the slower moving wind ejected by the star when it became a red giant around a quarter of a million to 400,000 years ago. Citation needed, it says. It's almost certainly from Wikipedia. I've copied this. The result of the collision is a shell and two shock waves, one moving outwards and one moving inwards. The inward moving shock wave heats the stellar wind to X-ray emitting temperatures. Um, yeah. So what was that? That was HD, here we go. That's the name of the star. Let me just um, add that in as a new object to see. That's good. I think I can. Uh... Let's see if we. DSA completed. Oh, okay. Let's do a deep space, a, a deep sky annotation. Um, let's 
plate solve this. Let's just make sure that star is, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, it's magnitude 7.4 and it's right in the centre. So if I paste in its location, hopefully, oh, did that work? Oh, there we go. Yep, that is the set, that's the star. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that this is the star. Oh, gone too far. This is the star. Oh my lord, I've gone very far, haven't I? It's going to 100%. Got a bit carried away. So that is the star. That's the Wolf Rayet star that is um, driving this this nebula. Let's come out. So, yeah. Right, let's adjust it. Let's see if we can bring up and actually see more structure, more colour. Let's bring those mid levels up. A little bit too much. Oh, we've got our decoloration, but let's take that off a second. What's that feel to do? There we go. In fact, if we come straight just over the top. Oh, there we go. So here is our really bright Wolf Rayet star. Here is the Crescent Nebula. You can see why it's called the Crescent Nebula. The reds. It's a little knot here of something. I zoom in. See, there's a little knot of gas quite bright that's brighter than the others. This is 77%. And there you go, the crescent over. So that's 27 um, frame stacks so far. These are eight seconds. Let's do a new observation. Save a central star. The central star um, lights. Up. The gas. So that's up the gas. Perfect. I'm doing um Second exposure at 900 yet. Yeah. And we're using darks. And we're using uh, gradient. We're up to 4 minutes 24 now. So that's 33 frames. And the Crescent Nebula is looking very nice. Still a lot of noise in, in the image. If you look at it. But again, very good. And that's really just a, a little trip around some of the highlights of uh, the sky right now. We're getting on towards, uh, we're in autumn and we're getting towards winter and soon Orion and that will be visible and we'll have great fun looking at the Orion Nebula, which is a magnificent sight. And the Horsehead Nebula maybe, which was the first time I ever saw the Horsehead was with the AA. Same scope, but needed a camera on the back, and I just couldn't believe it when I brought the mid levels up, and there it was, a horse's head, a dark nebula, superimposed over an emission nebula, and and it was very impressive. So if I say to you anything, if you if you want to get into AA, I would um, definitely look at the. There's many things online. There's many things on YouTube. Um, I would go to Cloudy Nights and look at the EAA um, forum there. It's uh, There's lots of helpful people there. Um, there's Doug, I think, in Kentucky, Emerald Hill Skies. If you want, um, if you want to look at things on YouTube, he does lots of um, observations once a week sometimes. I think he was doing Caldwell the other night and he was doing Herschel before. But he's um, he's got a, a RASA 11, which um, is slightly more impressive than my uh, CPC 800 but I think right we do is just watch this and say thank you very much for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed the observing tonight and uh, hope it encourages you to get into EAA thank you very much